What is up guys, Jeffrey Gaming here, welcome back to my F1 2016 career mode, we're at the halfway point of the final season, this is the Hungarian Grand Prix. If you are new to my channel, do remember to hit that subscribe button for the rest of the season and future F1 2017 content, but this season has been absolutely fantastic, I hope you guys agree with me, it's just been so exciting, the field is so close, and we're soon, we're not going to be the worst team I reckon, but uh, I'm aiming to fully upgrade the engine power, that might take us up of Haas. Um, I think that'll be the first time since season one Sauber haven't been bottom. So uh, that'll be a great achievement. You can see the season so far if you haven't checked last race. You've got to check it out. Once again the AI gifted me a victory. Exactly the same as China really. So we've been gifted two victories this season and it's just been so competitive and I'm hoping to con continue this at the Hungara ring. So into qualifying. We've currently put in three laps and we're dead last. I just didn't have the confidence. I don't know what it was, but this lap felt absolutely brilliant. This is on a new set of wet tyres at the end of the session. Purple in the first sector. I don't know if the track's improving, but I was nearly one and a half seconds up on my previous best. So I knew this would give us a great chance of getting out of Q1. And I just really needed a lap like this just to build up my confidence. So where are we going to end up after this brilliant lap? It's P11. So that should get us through to Q2. Seven tenths off first. And we ended up in P12, so it was a pretty decent lap. We'll see who got eliminated there. It's the usual suspects, really. The Williams Manor, Haas, and my teammate. So Ericsson wasn't last, so yeah, it does show. You can always base the car's performance on where he finishes, because he's not last and he's right up there. So uh, into Q2 now, I went for the classic. Just do a lap at the end of the session. I know we've only got two sets of wet compound tyres for, I think, the whole of qualifying. So I just went for one lap at the end of the session. Felt like a very solid lap, wasn't sure where it would get us, obviously we don't have the delta either, so come to the line, where have we ended up, how are we getting into Q3, we have indeed P3, and that was a shock to me I've got to say, I couldn't believe I was that high up, it was a really good lap, but I thought maybe P7, P8, we see who got eliminated there, a few be uh, decent names there, Palmer, ha uh, Hamilton and Sainz, so once again at the end of Q3, I felt confident of just putting one lap in and we're not even a tenth down. We are just building in confidence. I can't believe I was 22nd at the start of Q1 after three laps. My confidence is through the roof now. Can we improve? It's been a little bit of a scruffy final. Couple of corners come to the line. Have we got a decent position? Yes, we have. It's P4. We're so close to Perez and Hulkenberg. That's incredible how close that is with the Force Indians. But P4, that is absolutely brilliant. What a session that has been. Hopefully it's the same conditions for race day and unfortunately it's not. I saw the sun instantly and I thought, oh, we're definitely out of position. We're probably going to drop down the field like a stone, unfortunately. So this might be a bit of a defensive drive and hopefully we can recover some decent points. I don't expect to be finishing P4, especially if it's a clean, dry race. So there's the Drivers' Championship, very tight at the top between Sainz and Hulkenberg. And then there's a number of drivers that are very close behind, including myself. I think I'm in seventh at the moment. Constructors, it's the uh, same story as well. Five teams very close, and then uh, Sauber on our own in sixth. So Daniel Ricciardo has got pole position champion from season four. A number of other drivers will be trying to put him under pressure for the victory, so let's pass it over to Crofty for the grid for the following Hungarian Grand Prix. So before the off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. It was a good showing from Red Bull in qualifying, and Daniel Ricciardo starts from pole position, and Max Verstappen lines up alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Perez and the Sauber, Nico Hülkenberg and Rosberg, Raikkonen, Vettel, Kvyat, and Jensen Button, Palmer, Hamilton, Carlos Sainz, and Magnussen, Alonso, Massa, Valtteri Bottas, and Rio Harrianto, Verline, and Gutierrez, Marcus Ericsson, and Roman Grosjean starts from the back of the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So that's the grid sorted, onto the strategy and it looks like it's going to be a dry race throughout. I will be starting on the soft tyres, probably moving on to the mediums and then a quick stint at the end on the super softs. It does seem like it's a pretty simple two stop race for ourselves but the AI will probably try and mix things up and confuse me during the race but building up and it's five lights and away we go. We don't get a great start on the soft tyres there, Verstappen and Ricardo don't get great starts either. Perez is going for the lead, we're covering off Rosberg behind us, he's switching to the left. He's going to be later on the brakes as well. We try and hang it up on his inside. We're three wide, so there's a bit of a nudge there. We really didn't get a great start there, and at least we've maintained our position. Uh, the Red Bulls, that seems to make sense there, Pusta. I think they're both on the medium tyres, so that makes sense. Perez shoots off into the lead. 
And hopefully we should be able to keep up with the Red Bulls if they're on the mediums. That could give us a chance of attacking them. But uh, behind us we have Hulkenberg on the super, uh, super soft, who no doubt will be incredibly quick. Force India, I think, is the second quickest car. And on to lap four now. Not a lot happened. We tried to catch back up to Verstappen. Finally, we got within the one-second window. And now we're using DRS to close up to the back of the Red Bull, who's dropping off from his teammate a little bit. And in our mir mirrors, we have Hulkenberg, who's very eager to get past me. Uh, luckily for us, we have some pretty decent straight line speed in really the main overtaking spot for the AI on the start finish straight. Closing up to Verstappen, purple in the first sector, it shows we have put in a great start to this lap. Looking for the gap, sometimes I go for the dive bomb up the inside here or into the chicane, but I don't feel like I'm close enough to go for a move. And it would be a little bit too risky at this early point in the race. Lap 6 now, we have dropped off the back of Verstappen. Our tyres are feeling a little bit iffy, and it seems like Hulkenberg will probably be going for the overtake. He gets a great run out the final corner. Most of the AI drivers do. We try and force him to the inside, but he's got the move done. Someone else is trying to put us under pressure as well. That's Nico Rosberg, who nearly got us at the start, but uh, luckily for us, we uh, kept him behind us up the inside into Turn 1. And uh, that looks like Hulkenberg is away from us. So if we can follow him, I was thinking, yeah, maybe use his DRS and Slipstream to pull us towards Verstappen. It didn't end up like that, unfortunately. We did drop off a little bit more. We really are probably still out of position and dropping backwards through the field. But it's been an okay start for us. We haven't lost too many positions. Hulkenberg's in the pits, along with a couple of other super soft runners. Rosberg's putting me under pressure here. We're going to defend to the inside. He's slightly later on the brakes. We've got the inside line. Can we force him out? We do indeed no contact and that's great defending there. Rosberg knows about being uh, shoved out to dry with his battles with Hamilton. Got to bring that, up, bring that up even. So lap nine and tyres not feeling great at all. I feel like I can't take these that much longer. We go very wide going into sector three. Rosberg's got to run up the inside into the slow right hand there. We go for the switchback trying to get the position back as he took a not a great entry into that corner. I don't think we'll be going around the outside here. It's a very difficult corner to take normally. Never mind. Side by side. His teammate Hamilton's giving me a nudge there as well. Mercedes trying to double team me there. But luckily for us, we only lose one position. We'll get DRS. Not sure if we'll be able to go for the move. I don't think we did. But Haas did retire at that moment. And it was Gutierrez. His engine is blown. Which is disappointing for him after the points he scored recently. Finally scored some points in this career. Lap 10 now, I was really struggling with these tyres, and I saw Rosberg going into the pits, so I thought, yeah, I probably will follow him. It seems like the earliest point for the, for the soft compound runners to go into the pits, and he won't get the undercut or any drivers around us. So, very slowly into the, into the pits. Putting on the mediums, I knew this was going to be the stint, the key stint. Can we maintain consistent lap times that are pretty decent on these tyres? I know from experience these are very slow around here and I'm not great with them. So Rosberg ahead of us comes out side by side with Kvyat. That's going to get very close there. Will that present me an opportunity of going for a move or anything? Not yet, but they're side by side going into turn two here. Kvyat's definitely not giving up. I think they're on the same tyres as well. This is very close. I know the AI are very scrappy at this corner. Kvyat's been slowed down. We're going to get a run here. We've got it on Rosberg as well. Switching from the right to the left. Up the inside. Can we get the move done? Yes, we do. We do go off the track, but I think Rosberg did as well. So I'd say that's probably a legal move, but look how quick we are to react. Going to the right, switching to the left. You don't see that in F1 in real life at all. And that was a great move, very satisfying. Slowly moving to the right, I saw the opportunity. We had a gap to Kvyat behind us, so we can move to the left. Rosberg was late on the brakes, probably too late. I was pretty late as well, but uh, yeah, <laughs> double overtake. They're very happy with that. Kvyat's on board here. Gets shoved out to dry. The AI seemed to do that quite a lot at that corner. And yeah, the Sauber with just so much momentum goes up the inside. We actually do go further off the track than I, I expected at the time. But uh, Rosberg on his soft tyres, putting me under pressure, which isn't a surprise. Kvyat's there as well, so these two should be quite a bit faster than I am. And I try to defend this, try and hold them up. Can't shove Rosberg out to try this time because he has got much, much better traction there. We're trying to uh, make him go to the inside, but Kvyat's going through round the outside. Bit of contact. We don't want to be losing two positions here, sandwiched at the same time, but we get Kvyat back there and maintain P10. Rosberg's going off into the distance. There's someone coming out the pits. Are we going to be close to them? Because Kvyat's going for the move as well. We don't fight it too much. Still in the early stages of the race, so you know what I'm like. First half of the race, don't fight too hard. Don't wreck these tyres because I know I have to take these quite a long way. 
probably to the mid 20s so yeah need to look after these and they're not quick at the moment so never mind when the damage is worn out Hamilton's going for the move now again I'm not going to fight this with it's super soft tyres obviously he's going to get past me and yeah it's an easy move for Hamilton so we are going down like back down the field as expected I mean P4 we were in dry conditions we're nowhere near P4 we're probably like lower top 10 at best so yeah I think we're in a decent position overall probably I'd guess around lap nine, uh, position 9 to 11 around there but uh, yeah it's very difficult to tell the, this is one of another one of them tracks where the AI have a huge variation of strategies just compounds everywhere a number of stops Raikkonen goes on the move Button's putting me under pressure as well we try and fight back against Raikkonen but in the second phase of turn one we just can't get the power down on these tyres so Raikkonen's through Button's putting me under pressure and I seem to have battled the uh, McLarens quite a lot recently, uh, I've got to say. They've uh, definitely improved their car quite a lot from the past couple of seasons and seem to be scoring quite a few consistent points. So Button, this time you'd kind of expect him to go through, even with the Honda Power unit. And there's a Ferrari as well. Sebastian Vettel looks like he's come through as well. He's going to be three wide into turn one. What's going to happen here? It's very close. We go for the switch back on Button. Vettel, I think, kind of nudged Button out the way. So we regain one position. Button just can't get past me. The two Ferraris have got through. And Button, attempt three. Can he go for the move? Yes, he can. He's got great straight line speed with the aid of DRS. Up the inside, side by side through turn one. Again, I don't think we'll be defending here. We are closer than we have been against a few other cars, but we get onto the curb there, so there's not a lot we can do there. Button's up to sixth. And now still I'm scratching my head in terms of strategy. I don't know where anyone is. I don't know really where I am in the order. I know I've got one more pit stop to make as Ericsson goes into the pit. So super softs in a few laps. I feel like we can take them maybe eight, nine laps. So hopefully we have some uh, superior pace in the final stint. And uh, it's given to lap 23. Rosberg, very aggressive there. Just barges me out the way. I only went slightly wide as well. So, yeah. Definitely taking advantage of me making a slight mistake. And uh, very aggressive from Nico there. But I'm just, I'm just hoping and praying that these next few laps just go down very quickly. Because I am struggling. These don't have great pace. Yeah, I don't know if I should have tried a different strategy to avoid these ties. I don't think I really could have. Hamilton's coming past. Supersofts again. So I think he's made a third pit stop. Hulkenberg on the mediums as well. Blasting past me. These two side by side into turn one. I think Hulkenberg's made his final pit stop. So they're not really fighting for a position in terms of the final order. But uh, Hamilton gets uh, the better of Nico there. We're trying to follow through. Oh, very late on the brakes. Trying to keep up with these. But yeah, maybe getting a bit too excited there. But I'm just waiting. Need my pit stop. There's not too many cars that close to me that are uh, just behind me. So I think we're in a decent position. I'm not completely sure. Maybe the lower ends of the top 10, I hope. Maybe, uh, hopefully we can nab a point or two. Which from P4 on the grid sounds a bit disappointing. But uh, yeah, I didn't expect too much from this weekend. So coming into the pit, super soft. Hopefully we have some very good speed now. Where are we going to come out? P14 between the two McLarens again. Um, I'm actually quite lonely at the moment. Hopefully there's a number of cars ahead of me who are yet to pit for the final time. Because I don't think I'm actually in P14. That seems a little bit too low even though my pace on the mediums wasn't that great. And uh, hopefully the cars ahead of us like button on the mediums. Hopefully we can uh, close them down. So we're up to P13. Someone must have pit. And then we're going to get a bit closer to Jensen. Because there is a yellow flag and it's actually him that is going to retire from the race. And we're just about to pass him. So there's no point in putting in a replay and it's a blown up engine. Ah, McLaren Honda. Reliability in this career, I swear. It's the McLarens and the Mercedes that retire so often because of their engines. Rosberg's coming out the pit so we've actually undercut him. That's worked out very well. We're in P10. This could be our genuine position. Again, not 100% sure. So fighting for P10 with Rosberg. And I think that's Magnussen just behind him. So we're closing up on Bottas, who's got car issues. That's why he's nearly a lap down to us. We rarely lap anyone. But we're going to get DRS. This is going to help us in our defense against Rosberg. Rosberg looks like he's gone to the inside. I tried to cover him off. But then, no, I'm going to make this as difficult as possible for him. Lay breaking, narrow entry to the corner. No contact. I just left enough room. Now we're going to be side by side. We're both going to have DRS as well. So into turn two. He's got better momentum. I've got the inside line though. So back up the inside. He's left the room. We're on the grass as well. We're trying to squeeze him out, and I think he's going to barge across the slip.
at all, JR. Holy crap. What an impact that was. That was so unexpected. We'll see a number of replays here. So Rosbay barges us off like the AI always do. I expected. I saw Magnuson in my mirror. I tried to cover him off. But I moved maybe a little bit too late. We got absolutely flying. I don't know what flipped us over there. I've never seen my car do that at all. We nearly flipped it in Austria when we got taken out. I'm not sure this time if it's my fault or Magnuson's. But... I know I did move over to cover Magnuson off, he had the momentum, you'll see here, he just gets great speed, much more speed than me, I make a late decision to cover him off, he just doesn't back off, the AI just don't know when to back off, I guarantee in real life that accident wouldn't have happened at all, um, could, that, could this incident be a case of the halo by the way, our nose gets so close to Magnuson's head there, that's really scary, I know that crash probably wouldn't happen in real life, but wow. That is such an impact. That is incredible. I can't believe that's happened. I was so disappointed because we were fighting for the final point there. But yeah, just to see that crash, it's I can't believe this. Austria, then we take the victory in Silverstone and then this crash again. There were many laps to go. We're just slowing it down. Broken suspension there. But suddenly we flip from nowhere. I'd like to see this in slow motion. Very slow. Because I don't actually know what happens. Does the... Suspension on the tyre, flip the car over, I don't think that would be enough. I think it might be that advertisement board. Of all things to flip us over, as weak and flimsy as it is. Oh, that's a shot and a half. I mean, for the thumbnail for this video. <laughs> oh, there was a number of shots I could have done. Oh, that's absolutely insane, it really is. So, a bit of a glitch there with the advertisement board, but it meant... It resulted in a spectacular crash. I just wish the replays would carry on. I don't know if I would have taken out the uh, Mercedes ahead further down. That would have been pretty crazy. So I guess I'm going to leave it at that. We're out of the race. No points scored. So if you have enjoyed this uh, Hungarian Grand Prix, please do leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to see more crashes like that. And uh, yeah, hopefully next time we're not flipping out of the race. So I'll catch you next time out. Goodbye.